uh, before I start the things, I would like to introduce to this particular slide, where you can find two different mice uh, exposed uh, of same genetic backgrounds, but are exposed to different diets. And if the, uh, from the morphology, you can see they are different, because of the high fat diet exposure to that particular mice. But if you analyze the gene expression of that mice liver uh, on an array, so each uh, lines represent one gene in that way. So, uh, red mean high expression, green mean low expression, and you can see the difference is there between the two sets of mice where they are exposed to different genes. So, that means the gene expression can be controlled by different things, including the environment or the food habit. And altered gene expression under disease condition is of course uh, observed. So, how the gene expression is getting regulated? That is the fundamental questions that I try to understand. And to that end, I like to introduce to this uh, central dogma of, uh, of molecular biology, where the DNA get transcribed into the RNA, and then it translated into the protein. And in the process of these uh, things, the transcription is heavily regulated, of course, uh, and the translation as well. And, and the protein also get modified and get regulated for its expression. So, in that end, one small RNA I am going to talk about, is called microRNA that can regulate the gene expression by targeting some of the mRNA, binding to them and regulate their expression of protein from that particular mRNA or also induce the degradation of those mRNA uh, sometimes. So, how the gene expression is regulated? The central dogma now get changed. So, uh, on, on the invent of the microRNA, one can think about the microRNA can regulate the gene DNA level by regulating the transcriptional process, but primarily it also acts on the RNA to, to regulate the protein synthesis. And the protein that gets synthesized from the RNA is also work on the microRNA and get and, and regulate them. On the other way, the, the microRNA get transcribed from the DNA, so it also play an important role in the microRNA regulation. So I started my career uh, as an RNA biologist and I RNA forever so far. So uh, I worked on the mitochondrial tRNA import during my PhD time, and then I work on the mechanism of microRNA mediated gene regulation during my postdoctoral tenure. And right now in IICB, I work on the uh, mechanism of microRNA regulation in mammalian cells. So I like to introduce microRNA a little bit more. So this microRNA transcribed as a primary microRNA that are processed by an enzyme complex DGCRA dots into the nucleus to the pre-microRNA that get exported into the cytoplasm, matured there by the help of the two enzymes, in this case DICER and TRBP. And this DICER TRBP complex act on this uh, precursor form and process them to a double standard form. One of the stand of 22 nucleotide, including the microRNA, get incorporated into the argonaut proteins. And this argonaut protein microRNA complex then find the target genes and bind to them with the perfect or imperfect complementarities and induce translation and repression and deadenation of the mRNA. And that way to regulate the gene expression. So there are more than thousands of microRNA operates in humans. Almost half of the genes uh, that we encode are microRNA controlled. They regulate different stages of development, differentiation, apoptosis, and almost all biological processes. Their expression is dysregulated in human diseases, and uh, microRNA shows developmental and situ specific expression pattern. For there are there are microRNA that are only expressed in brain, there are microRNA only expressed in liver, and so on. So, as you can understand that microRNA is an important regulator of gene expressions. But what are the factors that control the microRNA activity in mammalian cells? That is the primary question that my lab address. So, modulation of microRNA activities, and we have four different research aspects that we address. So, one of them is the regulation of the intra and intercellular microRNA transport. Oh, what does it mean? I will introduce in a short while. And we have also groups of working on the alteration of this microRNA functions. In a host pathogen interaction motive, in this case, we use Lishmania Donovani as an infection model of macrophage to study how the pathogen infects the microRNA machineries of the macrophage system. On the other hand, uh, one interesting project we also do is the importance of subcellular organelles in controlling microRNA biogenesis and activity. Why it's important? I also am going to introduce uh, in the in the next few minutes. And we also have interest on the microRNA activation deactivation that is going on in the neuronal cells and it is important in neuronal gene expression. So, as I mentioned, the microRNA process inside the nucleus and gain, uh, get matured into the uh, cytoplasm. And then, this microRNA induce the translation and depression, but this microRNA can also get packed into certain vesicles in the multivesicular body. This is an endosomal compartments, where the 
micron get packed and these multivesicular bodies can fuse with the cytoplasmic membrane and release these small vesicles called exosome or now it is also called the extracellular vesicles depending on the marker protein present on these vesicles. Uh, and they can carry the small RNA like microRNA and also sometimes messenger RNA and certain protein factors between the cells. So, the microRNA can get released from the original cell into the, side, into the intracellular space and this microRNA then taken to the other cells where it become active. So, this is a very interesting uh, research going on about studying these extracellular vesicles and their importance in carrying mission messages between the cells. And in this way, microRNA is one of the important uh, messenger, uh, important message that they carry between the cells. So, the regulation of microRNA export could be an effective way to control gene expressions. And we uh, heavily studied this kind of gene expression pattern in mammalian cells. We regulate how the regulation of exosomal export of microRNA occurs, how the microRNA specifically get targeted to this, uh, this compartment and get exported out from this compartment into the uh, extracellular space and then taken to the other cells where it becoming an active. So, to study that we have an hypothesis to test. So, let us say we have two sets of cells. One set of cell has high microRNA, another set of cell has low microRNA. And if they are in contact or in, uh, or in the same environment, whether the microRNA get transferred from one cell to the other. So, Sudarshan Abbas was a postdoc in the lab who uh, did that experiment to uh, answer the questions. Uh, and find that there is a normal cell and cancer cell. Usually, this microRNA we are talking about this microRNA 1 to 2, which is a hepatic microRNA, and it is expressed exclusively in the hepatic cells. But hepatic cells lose that microRNA during its transformation into a cancerous cell. So, this is an anti proliferative microRNA. So, if you kept two cell lines, with one with microRNA 1 to 1 without the microRNA 1 to 2, these cells, the red one, is more proliferative because they do not have the microRNA. And these cells do have the microRNA are less proliferative. So, what happened? These cells secrete these exosomes with the microRNA 1 to 2 that are taken to that particular cells to reduce their growth. On the other hand, this cell is cancerous, it needs to proliferate. What it, what it does, it secretes uh, and growth factors, in this case, insulin like growth factor 1, and that insulin like growth factor 1 acts on the microRNA 1 to 2 productions on the neighboring cells and reduces the expression of microRNA 1 to 2. So, uh, uh, Sudarshan almost single-handedly done the experiment and published a paper where uh, she shown that insulin-like growth factor 1 prevent the MIR1 to 2 production in the neighboring cells to cut on the intracellular transfer and ensure the proliferation of human hepatoma cells. So, we have studied this mechanism and we have a belief when there is a problem in this kind of intracellular communication via microRNA then the, this is the probably the onset of the disease process. So, because maybe the prerequisite for the disease to develop. So, Shobik is one of the first PhD student joined the lab during 2008-9 and she's, he studied how the cell density can regulate this kind of microRNA stability and exosomal export. So, what he find? He find that uh, in the proliferating cells, usually the turnover rate of microRNA is very high they are getting exported out of the cell via exosomal pathways. But when the cells become senescent or growth adjusted, then the microRNA could not leave the uh, repressed messages and it bound, remain bound with the repressed messages and reduce the export process of the microRNA. So, that means the microRNA turnover is much, much less in the growth adjusted cells. That means these cells become less proliferative. So, ex exosomal export of microRNA is one of the hallmark of high proliferation it probably that is a also a way the cancer cell lose their microRNA or become proliferative. So, of course, the microRNA is an important player. It can go from one cell to the other and control the other process in the target cells. But what are the cellular and extracellular factors that can control the microRNA trafficking? So, to that end, uh, and we also want to know what is the mechanism of this kind of selective microRNA export. There are thousands of microRNA as I mentioned, but how selectively one particular microRNA or few microRNAs get selected into the exosome for its export. So, earlier during my postdoctoral time, I identified one protein HUR, which can act on the microRNA repressed messages and can make them derepressed by the microRNA by replacing this microRNA piece from the target where mRNA they bound. So, this was the first report in that way and published in cell to show that this process can be reversible, this microRNA repression process can be reversible and there are protein factors that can bind the UTRs 
can and, and de-repress this kind of microRNA activity in specific context, in this case under the stress conditions, because this protein is a stress response protein and it can only bind the mRNA under stress conditions. So what happened in the stress conditions also, this protein not only replace the microRNP from the UTR and make the mRNA available for the translation to occur and the protein get expressed, but also it decoupled the microRNA from the repressed microRNP, in this case argonaut proteins, and it can bind with the microRNA. And the HUR microRNA complex then targeted to the endosomes and where it get, get ubiquitinated, and this ubiquitination lead to the release of the microRNA from the ubiquitinated HUR and this get packed into this exosome uh, for its export. So this ensure the EV-mediated export of microRNA and it specifically happen for those microRNA that can bind with the HUR. So under the stress condition, HUR is a protein that favored the export of certain classes of microRNA, in this case in mir one to also, that are facilitated to the uh, export process by packing them into extracellular vesicles. So this was the work supported by the Wellcome Trust, and we published this paper in, uh, and Kamalika was the author of that particular paper, uh, where we show that the reversible HUR microRNA binding can control the extracellular export of microRNA 1 to 2 that augment the stress response in the, uh, in the cell. So this is the other thing we have done, and this is uh, also supported by the Human Frontiers uh, Science Program, so they also uh, cite the article. So, so far we can think about that exosomal microRNA uh, uh, can act as a vesicular hormones. So how they act as, because they are produced in one type of cells, secreted by that particular cell, taken to the other cells, not only necessarily in the same uh, context or in the neighboring place, space, but it can be taken to the bloodstream and go to the other organs, where the microRNA can be delivered to the other types of cells. So uh, this is very much similar to how the hormone functions in the cell in the system. So we call them the vesicular hormones and this microRNA can be taken to the other cell as a signal bit, or it can also act on the autocrine manner on the same cell that are secreting it. So to that end, uh, Sudarshana now uh, was engaged in another interesting work where she find that high export of microRNA 1 to 2 happens during the exposure of liver to the high fat. So the, if you expose to the high fat diet, it increases the lipid droplets in the, in, in the hepatocytes and as a cost of there is an increased export of microRNA 1 to 2. Why it's important? Because this microRNA now going taken to a macrophage that reside within the liver tissue called Kuffert cells. And these Kuffert cells get activated by this microRNA 1 to 2. Now we have no question mark because we already identified the way it activates the macrophage. And this act macrophage activation leads to the metaflammation, a process that is uh, associated with the increase of cytokine productions by the activated macrophage and that lead to not only the fatty liver development but also insulin resistance, diabetes and ultimately hepatocellular carcinoma. So this possibly in a way the high exposure of fat increases the microRNA 1 to 2 export, activate the macrophage and leads to these kind of complications and this project is now funded by the Sonoyanti Fellowship uh, from the Department of Science and Technology. So, so exocytosis of mir one 2 from lipid loaded hepatic cells is responsible for the hepatic inflammation and recruitment of the monocyte. We are working on this manuscript and we have a high hope with the manuscript to be published in a better journal. So, so far I discussed about this kind of intracellular uh, microRNA transport. Now I switch gear a little bit about the importance of these organelles in controlling microRNA expression. So before that, extensive research has already been done to understand how microRNA can regulate the messenger RNA. But it has never been exp ex explored how the abundance of the target mRNA can influence the microRNA content or activity. So, so regulation of microRNA activity by the target mRNA was one of the concern of us. And we use a cell to express high level of target mRNA, in this case a synthetic mRNA, with three microRNA binding site in tandem. And when we express them in excess, we can find there is an increase of microRNA 1 to 2 production when there is a target gene present. And this is not specific only to the uh, uh, microRNA of concern, but it happens to the other microRNA as well. But it's very much specific to the target you express for that particular microRNA because it's not affecting the other microRNA. So we did a lot of other works to understand the mechanism by how, which how it act. So the present concept was like that this dicer argonaut protein complex act on uh, 
uh, and the stream micron get processed and the dicer micron complex then uh, find the targets. So, where uh, has been shown by Moinak as a PhD student that this micron argonaut complex bind the UTR and then scan it till it finds the target genes, uh, target sites and this target site binding release the dicer protein in that way it enhance the processivity of the dicer one and this dicer now again available for another round. So, that is why the availability of the targets have an influence on the dicer one argonaut to dissociations and increase the production of a next round of microRNA. So, this way he has shown that there is a target dependent biogenesis of cognate microRNA in a human cell for the paper he published in, in Nature Communication. So, so, last few minutes I will discuss about the how the microRNA mediated repression is also important in the, uh, in the organelar con context. So, does translation repression and deregulation occur simultaneously and if, uh, if yes then where? So, to answer the question we already have one evidence to suggest that the polysome association of the target mRNA is on the endoplasmic reticulum is essential for the translation depression to occur. So, this is the first step where the RNA go to the endoplasmic reticulum associated polysome and interact with the argonaut protein. So, in the repression process there are two steps there is a deatomization de de uh, and degradation, but before that there is a translation depression. So, we have work uh, done on the on that line to suggest there is a spatio temporal uncoupling of microRNA mediated translation repression occurs uh, and the target RNA degradation is there in the mammalian cell. So, that means in the endoplasmic reticulum the target RNA get uh, repressed before they get targeted to the early endosomes. So, with the, all the biochemical as we have done on that I am not going to the detail, but then this early endosome taken to the late endosomes and matured there decapped and deatomated the RNA and get degraded. So, this repression and degradations are not only uh, temporarily uncoupled, but also spatially uncoupled. That means they are happening in the two different compartments. And uh, these proteins like the HRS and SCART complex complex that are responsible for the maturation are also controlling this kind of RNA mediated, uh, micron mediated translation, depression and degradation process. So, how organelle dynamics, because organelle are not a fixed entity, they are also interact among themselves affect the micron compartmentalization and activity and how the compartmentalization ensure the cooperativity of translation and repression. So, to that end we have one hypothesis where that this early endosome or MVV compartment and the ER compartment are not in proximity, but they really do interact with the help of one compartment uh, organelles called mitochondria because you can see the images that are taken in high resolution one can see the intricate relationship or the interaction they have in between. So, if the microRNA is in one compartment, the mRNA is this compartment, then the translation will be very high because they are not seeing the repression. But when there is a organelle interaction going on, this microRNA will see the mRNA because they will exchange of factors between the two compartments and then it would it get repressed and the gene expression will be down. So, organelle interaction is essential for effective gene regulation. So, how to address that? So, Jogarito did that work and uh, he published a paper in MBOC to suggest that Lishmania Donovani actually restrict the mitochondrial dynamics to enhance the microRNA stability and target on a repression in the host macrophage cell. So, this is the way he showed that the compartmentalization mechanism of the post transcription gene regulatory machineries in animal cells is important. So, now we can uh, addressing this kind of thing in the disease process to address how, why and where this kind of interaction is happening. So, this is really the, the key aspect that we are really addressing right now the help of this high risk high reward fund from the DVDST to address the importance of the organelles in the post transcription gene regulation process. I only cited the example where the microRNA machineries can be regulated by this in kind of interactions, but there are evidence that may be happening for the other kind of post transcriptional events like RNA degradations or even translation. So, uh, with that I will uh, do not have time to highlight anything, but I just highlight we also discover this Lishmania secreted exosome has a role to play in controlling the uh, micron activity in the hepatocyte that favors the Lishmania survival. So, Lishmania Donovani targets one protein dicer to down regulate MIR 1 to 2 to lower serum cholesterol and facilitated murine liver infection. So, today I do not have time to highlight anything about the other type of work we have done. Uh, for example, this uh, neuronal aspects, but here you also have interesting observation how the microRNA phosph agotophosphorylation can regulate the process. So, with that I will end. 
and to show that how the intra intracellular exchange of epigenetic signal can contribute and maintain gene expression homeostasis in animal liver. So, thank you all uh, and this is the people who have done the work and this is my lab and I will be happy to answer any question you may have.